Take a look at problem 4-4. Four, four. A projectile is thrown from the top of a building with initial velocity of 30 meters per second in the horizontal direction. If the top of the building is 30 meters above the ground, how fast would the projectile be moving just before it strikes the ground? Alright, so what do we know? We know we have a building that is 30 meters high. And we're going to shoot a projectile straight horizontal. And it'll hit the ground. Now it'll hit the ground with the same horizontal speed as it had initially because there is no acceleration in the x-direction. But it'll also hit the ground with some y velocity since it will be falling from rest in the y direction. So ultimately we'll want to find the velocity of these two components add, to, add together vectorially to find our final velocity and the magnitude of that. And that will be how fast it's moving when it strikes the ground. So let's think about this. We have two independent motions happening simultaneously. If we uh, write down what we know, our initial velocity in the x direction is 30 meters per second. And that will be constant all the way through. Our initial velocity in the y direction is zero. We're starting from zero. We're just basically falling. And if we only look first at the y direction, we would, um, let's say, define down as positive. We, we don't have to, but why not? And our initial velocity would be zero. With down positive, our acceleration would be 9.8 meters per second squared and we know ultimately we're going to go a full displacement down to the ground so that is going to be 30 meters so our displacement will be a positive 30 meters because down is positive positive. and from our position our final position minus our initial position in that sense will be 30 meters so based on this information we want to find time because all this is going to happen simultaneously with the x motion. So I have kinematics in the y direction. I can say displacement will equal initial velocity times time plus one half acceleration times time squared. But our initial velocity is zero. So I just have it, displacement equals one half acceleration times time squared time will equal two times displacement divide by acceleration square root that will be two times thirty divide by nine point eight square root and if I figure that out two point four seven seconds So that's the time for the motion, and that's how long it's going to be in the air before it hits the ground, and that's true for both the y direction and the x direction. So if we think about that, we already know what the x velocity is going to be, the final velocity. Our final x velocity is 30 meters per second, but we now can calculate our final y velocity. Y velocity will equal our initial y velocity plus the acceleration times time. But we started from rest in the y direction, so it's strictly going to be acceleration, 9.8, times time, 2.47. And our final y velocity then would be 24.2, 24.25 meters per second. So we are looking at a situation where we have a y velocity going down of 24.25 meters per second and an x velocity going to the right of 30 meters per second. And this is how this uh, projectile is going to hit the ground with these two velocities. Net velocity is the vector sum of these two.
So I can say, if I wrote this as a vector, that my final velocity is going to be 30i minus 24 point three j meters per second and I found the magnitude of this vector I would square the components 30 squared plus negative 24.3 squared negative is not going to matter when I square it square root because they're perpendicular so by the Pythagorean theorem that would give us the magnitude of this And I get 38.57, we'll say 38.6 meters per second. That is the magnitude of this vector right there. Um, the angle would be the inverse tangent of our y over our x. So that'd be, let's just take the magnitude. So we're going to have uh, 24.3 over 30 inverse tangent. So if I did that, I'm just curious. That's 39 degrees and that would be below the positive x-axis. So that's how it's going to hit at an angle of 39 degrees below the positive x-axis at a speed of 38.6 meters per second.